Hey, ladies, how are you? Hey, how's it going? I'm doing, doing good. good. How are you doing? Yeah, just busy, busy. Loving the life, living the dream. <laughs> a customer is in a situation with their computer or their 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 tension or something and nobody's really around to help them at the time how are they going to get through that situation like you like tracy what the thought that was to me was when you gave that when you said something earlier it just really resonated you said nobody was around to show me so i just experimented i tried until i got through well i That's didn't have a choice i had no support and there was no internet so figure it out or let all that money sit there. And I, th I think we have a situation now where people are afraid of their machines. That's what I'm getting at. Like you can, like my phone, the worst thing you can do is turn it off and start it back up again. Right. Or the computer control, alt delete, shut it down, start it back up again. Right. Like you said, Angela, the other thing you said is like, we're afraid to touch our computers to a degree. This generation mm -hmm. is afraid to touch our computers. Yeah. But I wasn't trying to give them the skills of like, it's okay while you're in this tough situation. A, one, to be frustrated. Two, to feel like you're really struggling. But three, you are going to work through it. Because Tracy, you also said some of your best learning situations are your mistakes. That's how, that's how I learn is by doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. That's Not right. Nervous, but you just have to keep finding out what's going to work for you. Yeah. That's where I was leading with that conversation. Sorry, like it's not perfect at the moment, but how can we get out of that to make it a much better, happier, rosy place to be at with your long arm and your quilting? So, another way that this could be tackled is to look at what resources are available to people. Because when Tracy and I started, there weren't as many resources available. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, and even me on my old Tin Lizzie, there was nothing because there was no support on Tin Lizzie. Yeah. But I mean, you might be able to see how to load a, uh, I don't know, remember how long ago you started, Kathy, oh. but like when I started, I'm a baby compared to you all. Yeah. When I started, and, and Tracy's been long me a lot longer than I have, um, oh. there were not a bunch of videos out there on YouTube for me to go and watch how to load something, right? Like, mm -hmm. I got the one that came with my APQS. Tra uh, Tracy had a different brand before her APQS. So I don't know if they gave you a loading video or not. But even the one that came with the APQS at that point was quite old. Um, the machines didn't look like the machine I had. And it was more of like a talk show type um, atmosphere than actually uh, breaking down how to load a machine. So it was hard to follow. Um, I hard for me to keep my attention on if that makes sense, because it was like a talk show. So obviously, I could go do something else when I was watching this video, right, and just have it in the background. I didn't really need to listen to it is kind of how I felt. Um, not on purpose, but that's my mind. So I did a lot of internet searches, a lot of blog searches at that point, because there just wasn't anything on YouTube at that point, right? Um, to, and found a bunch of different ways to doing things. And then like uh, Linda Taylor had written a book on how to long arm. I did buy that. It didn't help me a whole lot. I think it's probably, it has really good information, just not specifically for my machine, if right. that makes sense. Right. So I think now there's so much information out there, right? There's so much out on YouTube there's just a plethora of information out there on how to use your machine, just the machine, right? Um, not including all the information that's out there on how to run a computer if you have one on it, um, how to do specific, you know, like uh, shapes you want to do. The information that we have now is so much better than it was even 10 years ago, right? So approaching it from, instead of approaching it as I have a problem and there's no one to help me, like, this is going to sound harsh, but you need to help yourself too. That's what I'm trying to get at. We need to help ourselves and not be, that's what I'm trying to get at, that part of it. Like, even though you have 50 different videos, sometimes that can be overwhelming mm -hmm. instead of just trying. Sometimes I feel like too much information is also a bad thing. Well, it's another way to have paralysis, right? Is to, you know, mm -hmm. 
and for those of us that, uh, you know, we just talked about, about, you know, I can sit and watch Netflix for hours, right? Um, having 50 videos on how to load a quilt isn't always helpful, helpful to me if I don't at least try one of them, right? right. So right. you have to stop at some point and say, okay, there's a similarity that all of these people are talking about. Let's go down that that path and see if I can get this quilt loaded. Um, and I think that, that that's the part that, that there are people who aren't getting, right? Is that the information's out there. Mm -hmm. um, you have to decide what is going to work for you, right? There's no right and wrong way to do anything. All three of us load differently, guys. And I know right. it for a fact because I've watched both of you load. Um, and yet all three of us are able to quilt. We're able to get our our quilts off the, the frame square. Um, you know, it, it's learning a method and then making sure that you understand how to keep your stuff square and true using the method that you're using. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get that people to help themselves instead of getting into the trap of like, well, I must call somebody. Well, I mean, I think that in the or end, here, call me. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, yes. But I mean, I think that I also think our service team, it wants to talk to people too. So Oh, There's I two sides to that, right? Is right. Yes, try for yourself, but yes, don't let it go for four days either. Like if you're still not able to get something loaded, I mean, at that point, you need to be calling somebody to talk to. But service may not be your best call either. Um, like if you're trying to load something onto a frame, I would be looking at an APQS dealer, right? Because they yeah. quilt, right? That's so, what I mean, our service are out there. Yeah are mechanics, right? Um, and they're really, really good mechanics. But they're not quilters. Uh, they're not. They're not. They can help you balance tension. They can talk to you about how to, to, to load things. But that's not where their specialty is, right? right? When you look at the three of us, our specialty is quilting, <sighs> right? Yeah. I, can, I am a mechanic. All three of us are. Um, I'm a lot slower than Jake. I'm a it? lot slower. It's going to take me a lot longer to diagnose your issue if it's really is an issue with the machine than it's going to take service. Does that make sense? So also choosing where you're going to call and who you're going to talk to, right? So that's part of it too. And I guess that's partially the reason that I look at that is because of quilt path, right? Who am I going to call if I have an issue with it? You know, Am I having an issue because I don't know how to run the software? Am I having an issue with the software or if I, am I having an issue with the hardware, right? Who do I call? Because there's three different choices there. Um, if you're having an issue with the software, anybody who knows how to use the software can typically get you through whatever you're trying to do, right? So, and we have lots of educators out there that teach Quilt Path, right? If it is a true software issue, then it would be the Grace Company because they're the software company. And if it's a hardware company, then it's APQS, right? So it depends on what part of Quilt Path you're having problems with, right? Right. And you can break long arming down the same way, trying to, to diagnose where your the issue is coming about. But if it's just education, I mean, man, there's, there's so much information out there. Like just Tracy's website alone, her YouTube site is a great one to go to because she's got, you know, how to thread a machine. She's got how to load a machine. She's got, you know, how, how to free motion quilt, you know, all out there on one YouTube site. Right. Mine focuses more on the computers and then, you know, Kathy's is just more fun. Yeah. Is more yeah mine's fun. more goofy, stupid stuff. But <laughs> we're working on it. I'm working on it. Okay. You're working on it. Well, and also with different brands, we don't know what their level of like a 10 Lizzie, somebody who has a 10 Lizzie who's still running, is going to have a very hard time, time finding service. So it's going to have to yeah. be down to doing some deep diving research. Yeah. Right? You're going to have to get pretty good at internet searching if you want to keep that 10 Lizzie going. That is true. Right. And find a repair guy who'd be willing to even work on it. I mean, unfortunately, there's some of those machines out there, right? I would think there would be other brands out there, too. Royal is one that comes to mind from a long time ago that also 
is no longer in business and didn't get bought out by anybody. Right. So, yeah. And, but here's the other part of that too, is that if you're trying to balance your tension on one of those machines, you probably don't need a service tech. Right. So tension is typically not something that you would need to talk to a service tech about. It is typically something that another long armor can walk you through. Mm-hmm. It's going to be different on your machine than it is on mine. And we may be guessing on what, like I would have you take a picture of your thread path and then go, let's see how we can change this and make it and what it does. Right. Um, I'm not going to be afraid of a machine. Well, and so, that's yeah. the thing too. It's not, not to be, not to be afraid to make changes to it. You can't break it. Right. So if it's already not doing what it's supposed to do, you're not going to make it worse. Right. You know, so a a quick thing about that, when it comes to that kind of thing in particular, if you're trying to troubleshoot a stitch quality issue, whether it be your tension or I don't know, whatever, Mm -hmm. you only ever want to change one thing at a time. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Depending on the issue, I'll just start with when was the last time you changed your needle? Now, that may or may not in in a certain situation matter, but say we have a tension problem. Just change one thing. So try a different thread path, then work through that and see how that results. Still not that great? Then you're going to go to your next thing and to your next thing and your next thing. Don't change. I see in these forums, it drives me batty. Somebody will say, oh, I can't get my tension right. And you get all these people in there saying, oh, your timing's out. What? Right. Did you <laughs> break a needle? <laughs> Did you hit a ruler and break it? Like, timing doesn't just slip off. You know, something violent has to happen for your timing to go out. Um I I see people go to these forums or Facebook groups or whatever you want. And by the time they've asked their question, they've got 55 million things. People, oh, you need to do this and you need to do that and you need to do that. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, and I've been there. Yes. Way back in the day before there was a YouTube and there were forums and everything. Mm -hmm. Too much information can become overwhelming. And then one would try to do everything all at once. Okay, well, I'm going to change my thread pass and I'll change the size of my needle. And while I'm at it, I'm going to play with my bobbin case tension. <laughs> and and then we don't know what you've done. Now right. we don't know what you've done because you've changed mm-hmm. too many things all at once. And one and, thing at a time. Well, and the argument from the user at that point is going to be, I've tried it all. But not at all. But trying it all at one time doesn't let us troubleshoot what's going right. on. Right. Right. So, yeah. And, and that's a danger, right? Because you're at by yourself. It's really easy to go. I'm just going to change everything and make sure it's not any of this stuff. Well, it's going to be one of them. Right. Right. So we just need to isolate it. Know which one it, if you change everything or change three or four things all at once and the, the um, issue is solved by chance. I mean, it's very rare that you change all those things and all of a sudden magically it happens. Right. Um, but you don't know what the problem was then. Yeah. So you haven't learned anything. So here's the thing that, that kind of sticks out to me when you're on a group, you know, a big forum like that, Facebook, whatever, and you ask for help and somebody asks you a question back, that's the person you want to talk to. Yeah. Right. Because they're trying to understand your problem. Right. So somebody starts asking you questions they're actually trying to diagnose what's going on. They're not just trying to band-aid over what's ever, whatever's going on. They're trying to figure out what's going on so they can give you the best possible answer. So when you're on one of those groups, if someone starts asking you questions, start answering their questions. Like don't read anything into what they're trying to, to ask. Just answer the question that they ask. Right. And more than likely it's going to ha- lead them to an- ask you another question. So That is something when you learn how to do technical troubleshooting that you're trained to do is to ask questions. questions. And you can immediately tell if someone is not trained to to technically troubleshoot because they don't ask any questions. They just want to give you an answer 
And it's going to be whatever answer they give you at that moment. And mm -hmm. it may not fix your situation long term, could fix it short term, may not, right? But if somebody's asking questions, they understand enough about what you're doing to be able to see cause and effect, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And just because somebody gives an answer doesn't mean it's right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah, answers on Facebook have no value at all. It will not even buy you Starbucks. I am just saying, or Timmy's, depending on what country you're in. Facebook answers don't really like pay for anything because they're not worth anything a lot of the times. Yeah. You get really, really good information on Facebook. And you can get Facebook or answers that are worth what you paid for them. Nothing. So, which is nothing, yeah. right? Yeah, so, it can be overwhelming too. And especially yeah. when I've, I've also seen somebody put the same question in three different Facebook groups. Yeah. Well, now they've got 300, 400 people just firing things at them. Yeah. Well, and we see that at times, like, um, I'll see something and I may not notice that like Tracy's answered a question or Kathy's answered or, or one of our fellow APQS dealers right. has started helping them and we'll jump in and try to help too. As, as dealers and as certified maintenance techs, we also need to, to take a step back and say, she's in good hands or, or he's in good hands. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and show the respect and trust in our fellow dealers and certified maintenance techs that they can answer the question too. Um, and it's pretty telling when people can't do that. Right. So I have every faith out here that, you know, Tracy and Kathy and most APQS reps can answer any question for anyone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I need to prove that every day that I work. Right. And not step on their toes and not step on services toes if service is out there trying to help somebody. It's mm -hmm. good to have that continuity of care. Right. It's I want that with my I want that with my my care. I would like that with my machines care kind of thing also. And then with that person that you're building this the, you know, who's answered you and has said, Hey, I'll help. Yeah. And, it, and sometimes it's worth it just or to I say you're talking to whoever, you're in good hands. Yeah. Right. Um, but you know, respect your, then we're not really co-workers in the APQS work, but respect your co-workers, right? And, um, and say, you know, I know I have every faith that you're in good hands right now, right? Because in the background, more than likely what's happening is a bunch of us are talking already because <laughs> we're like, okay, have you tried this, 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 and this, right? And I can give a big long oh, list yeah. to another dealer that would overwhelm a user, Right. So we bounce stuff off each other all the time in the background, yeah. right? And that would be true of the three of us and then really the entire used dealer base. Right. It's also good to share what you've learned too. Hey, mm -hmm. I learned blah, 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 blah. And yeah. this is how I did it because all of us learn differently. All of us, I mean, all of us learn differently. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, I learned that if I... Uh, the big conversation last week or this week was about digital prints again. Digital prints are huge right now in the industry. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody was was talking about changing your needle size and how it made a difference. Well, yes, because it changes the deflection. So it makes sense that it would, would actually, um, it could change how it's pulling through that material at the time. The one that I saw that I hadn't really thought about, but makes sense is somebody said, oh, I put, I put sewer's aid silicon on my thread, which just makes the thread slide through easier. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But it reduces the tension on the fabric too. Right. The actual pulling tension of the thread going through the fabric. And all of a sudden I'm like, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. You know, didn't actually even think about that one. So, I mean, we're all going to learn things. Right. Oh, always. I hope so. <laughs> Slap me in the face when I'm not, please. Yeah, really. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore when I'm not learning things, guys. I like right. to learn. Well, and I think that's just part of this. Um, I watched uh, APQS's video with Karen McTavish. And one of the things that really struck me with is power, you know, don't, but power through the fear. 
right? I think when we have a machine that's frustrating us or tension that's frustrating us, or I can't piece this one, I can't understand the instructions very well or whatever, we need to power through that fear sometimes and really just try to sit back and look at it and work through it. I would think that's especially true if you want to learn how to free motion quilt too. Oh, you yeah. got to be willing to step up to the machine and sew. Mm -hmm. Right. Just try it. Yep. Right. <laughs> you never know what's going to come out. And like you said, Tracy, not every day is a backtrack day. So maybe <laughs> that's not, not the day or maybe I, I was doing that the other day because I had to get a quilt done on Sunday and we had to be open because of our shop hop and I'm doing these these feathers and I'm doing bump back feathers and I'm like, I hope today's a backtrack day. I hope today's a backtrack day. I got to get done. I got to get done. <laughs> and I did. But anyway, it just made me right. laugh and giggle and enjoy the moment in a different way than I normally would have. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. so I think that's some, something too that, um, and the same with, I think it's amazing how people get frustrated with their computer systems. And yeah, I now have an Android. I have an Apple thing in my life now. I have my Surface Pro in my life now. And dang it, I'm an old lady and I forget how things work sometimes. And I'm up there tapping it and Jake will be like, you just need to do this, Kathy. And I'm like, oh, sorry, that's my other device. I'm sorry. <laughs> I forget things even working through everything at the moment that I got to realize and step back and kind of almost relearn a little bit or give my brain a chance like and to slow down, to actually breathe, to think. I think for some reason, people think that computers are smarter than they are, mm -hmm. which I, I find weird and interesting, right? Because computers are stupid. Like they can only do what they're programmed to do. Right. Um, so at, whoops. So at no point is a computer going to be smarter than you. Like my computer that keeps turning itself off. It is not smarter <laughs> than me. It just isn't responding to any of the things I've tried to make it stop doing that. <laughs> it's like, it's like, so the computer woman and uh, Tracy yeah. said the computer girl. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I changed a setting before. But she can't figure it out. We're all sunk. <laughs> I'm not trying super hard right now. I don't want to live in a world where Angela's having trouble with a computer. Oh, <laughs> if you think I don't have trouble with computers, you don't know me, guys. I talk bad to my computers. I do it all the time. Well, we all have problems at times. assume that you know all the things. Yes. I was comfortable with that thought. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> You're comfortable with that thought. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, okay, yeah, no. <laughs> no. This is like one of the things I love teaching about Quilt Path when I'm out there teaching Quilt Path is getting everybody. I said, the one thing I want you to take away from this is you are not going to remember everything we just walked through because you're fire hosed with information. I just mm -hmm. gave you a trigonometry in computers and we're, we fired you, hosed you, right? Something big. Mm -hmm. One thing. So I want you to not be afraid to push the buttons and try. Push the buttons. Just don't push them too fast because yeah. that doesn't like that. Don't double tap on those buttons. No, don't but you can tap. push the buttons for sure. <laughs> Let Quilpath. Quilpath is a one task pony. It wants mm -hmm. to <laughs> completely task finish pony. one task and then do the next task. So if you well, double tap, you're more that way to a degree. Yeah. Because they're, well, if you think about what that system is really doing. Yeah. It's doing a lot. It has all those stitches in the memory. It has the X and Y coordinates. It mm -hmm. has a lot of information sitting real close to that to the surface. Ha ha, no pun yeah. intended. But well, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You look at it and you're like, this is not a dense, you know, dense pattern. It's easy. And Quilt Path is going, yeah. There's a million calculations to do that one line. Right. So right. things that even that things that we think should go quickly sometimes take a little bit longer than we think it will. Will just because of the sheer number of calculations that have to be done, <laughs> and it has to calculate it for every x y you know, coordinate that it's doing as it's quilting. So it's still calculating as it's quilting. Um, 
it's pretty amazing to be honest with you what it can actually do. And, and this would be true of anything that's doing, you know, this X, Y plotting, any CNC machine, you know, laser cutters, they all do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not, machines. yeah, it's not unique to computerized quilting by any means. Embroidery machines do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I heard a comedian one time talk about how we, how impatient we are <laughs> as a society like for goodness sakes, the phone doesn't start ringing the instant you hit dial because it has to go all the way up to space and back down somewhere else. Like have a nanosecond while it goes all the way up to space and back down. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to when Tracy and I first started quilting. And when we wanted to go onto the internet, we had to use a modem. Yes. Okay, so it would make sounds to us while it was connecting. Remember that sound? ALL. Uh, uh. I used to be able to sing it. I can't anymore. That fire up sound when yep. you when you would go. Over your... Yep. <laughs> I don't and know. Depending I on remember. what type of modem you had, how many something called bods it had, the handshake that sound that we heard was different compared. You know, so yeah. you could tell how fast someone's modem is just by the handshake when it first started out. That's yeah. funny. See, she, that's what it. she knows, Tracy. Right there. That's yeah. what she knows. I did not know that. Stuff. I thought everybody's modem sounded the same. <laughs> nope. It had to do with it. Had to do with how many bods you had on your modem. But most of us probably had 2,400 bod modems back then. But they were they were faster than ones than that too. Um, so yeah. But can you imagine logging yeah. on to AOL today? <laughs> First of all, my phone is internet based. <laughs> right, like, right. Blow that one up. I don't even have a dial tone. It's like well, everybody need, everybody wants everything instantly from yeah. from being proficient at something to everything. I mean, even I see it all the time. You're at a stop, you're at an intersection and the light goes green. God help the person in in the front, if they don't step on the gas, the nanosecond, nanosecond that light goes green. Yes. The guy behind them's honking. Like, <laughs> <"Woo>, what? <laughs> okay. Can I register that the light has changed to green? I'm not sitting here for five minutes. No, I'm not on my phone. <laughs> I'm waiting for the light to change. I need to take my foot and move it to a different pedal. It might take me 2.5 seconds. Not me personally. I have a bit of a lid, but, but you know what I mean? It's just the impatience of everything. Like, like yeah. move now. Yeah. Or you're waiting for the person that you don't think is going to stop to race through the light, which happens all the time here. So, right. you know, yeah. I'm not going to jack rack butt off the line because I'm like, someone's going to come straight the other direction <laughs> it's, or turn left in front of me or do something. Right. 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 Yeah. I think as, and then everybody's anxiety brings more anxiety to me sometimes, but also to some of my most, favorite moments of my quilting journey is me figuring it out myself. Yeah. And then taking that quilt off and looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. I had the neatest thing happen in my showroom. I had someone who, who uses quilt path a lot, but she doesn't custom quilt with it. Her first custom quilted machine or quilt came off the frame. And she was analyzing every little thing about that quilt. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh no, no. Normal. You're we're going to bury all these threads and hang it on the wall. Right. And then you can tell me what's wrong with this quilt. And you're going to get up on the wall and she's like, it's so pretty. Surprise. I was like, surprise. <laughs> you did that. Yeah. Like I knew it was okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're six inches away when we're doing stuff. So we got to step back and look at the big picture sometimes too. Right. And you guys know, you both free motion quilt as well. My favorite part of taking a quilt off the frame when I've been free motion quilting is looking at the back. Oh, I thought of you on Sunday when I 100%. did that. <laughs> yes. I, I love solid back quilts. I don't care what color they are. I just want them to be solid so you can see the quilting so it shines. Absolutely. I did a, I did a cuddle with uh, hand prints with uh -huh. very micro stippling and then feathers in each square and there was it was like you could see it was the so little cute. tiny baby handprint and the big handprints it was so fun from the back yeah Aww. i liked that quote from the back too it was cute from the front but she showed me pictures of the back i was like that is stinking cute 
Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Which is the thing about that'll be next to the grandma. It'll be so perfect. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. That is nice. Well, I feel like, yes, in this world, uh, I got it. And also, too, we also have to remember while, and I am hyper aware of all of the quilts that I have in the back that my customers are waiting for. It is just quilting. There's nobody's life on stake. There's nothing here, but it is just quilting. If my machine goes down for some reason, it goes down. Or if my whatever has happening and my tension or whatever, and I need to take a break for a little while, it is just quilting. And I want that quilt to be perfect, right? Like there's that moment that you can take a breath, assess the situation, and then go back into it, right? For sure. Mm -hmm. absolutely I think breathing is something that we lose track of like in life I do I feel like taking a breath is something that we don't do there are apps you can get now to remind you to breathe oh good you obviously need an apple watch because it tells me I'm not breathing right all the time (laughs) But do you know what I mean? We that stop and smell the roses saying. There's yeah. these sayings that have been around for a long time because we're not the first generation to say this either. Mm-hmm. And they're not going to be the last. But Doug and I were talking about this the other day on the, how fast, like you, when you all started, there was no really, there was dial up. And now we have this on our phone. We have crazy instant 5G, whatever you want to talk about. Do you think about the right from the when the Wright brothers were still alive when man landed on the moon? Like in the 1700s to the 1800s, that lifestyle was pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden, this past little bit, we have like accelerated to such a fast speed. Things are changing at hypersonic speeds. Ha ha. No pun intended. So have you thought about this, the space shuttle? Okay, mm-hmm. this is, when you're actually looking at the, the space shuttle that with the U.S., right? The computers on the space shuttle are so old. They were built in the 1980s. They have never been upgraded to current standards. Now, the new, you know, vehicles that we're doing, like SpaceX is doing and mm-hmm. that, those all have new computers. But the space shuttle, they put up a space shuttle. They are still using technology from the 80s. I would say that is commercial versus government. Well, of course. That's going to be part (laughs) of it, for sure. And upgrading those computers, I mean, it's not as easy as I'm just going to drop a faster processor in this and let it go. I mean, they have to upgrade everything inside of there because you know, boards are different now and, yeah. you know, they talk differently and they plug in differently. And, you know, all, you know, even if you look at like, if you want to out to buy a brand new Microsoft surface, there's not a USB a on it anymore. Yeah. No kidding. I was talking to someone else that someone the other day that pointed out there's not a CD ROM on her new laptop. And I was like, there's not even a USB a on your new laptop, like CD ROMs. They're, yeah. like floppy nope. disks at this they're all gone. Right. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I got USB ports. They're all gone too. Now you have to buy an adapter. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Oh, like, how fast it's changed. It's just changing so, so fast. So, so when you I, look at your technology though, like if you have a long arm and you have an embroidery machine, like the way that you connect those systems, mm-hmm. the adapters have changed on all of them again. Think yeah. about it. It's like, it's not just like you got a new computer and like your mouse is different, right? Everything in your world is changing and you don't even realize it's changing. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I like to like try to figure things out myself Mm because then I feel like I'm a better learner that way. (laughs) I am, you know, how do I, I am the queen of going up to Google and going, how do I get from USB A to USB C or how do I get from a parallel port to USB-C, right? Because there's got to be a way to do it, right? It's just finding the adapter that you need on Amazon to get it done because it's going to be somewhere like that that you're going to have to buy it from. 
So Tracy, I bet you and me, our searches are more like, how do you turn on the computer? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh -oh. I figured that part out. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> I'm just giving a little bit of an example. Aid is voting. Aid is voting. <laughs> take the time, take a breath, mm -hmm. and go get at it and learn the best way that you can by trial and error, right? You can do it. Most definitely you can do it. You can do I, it. I heard about this one person when we were talking about the differences on our computer system, but on the quote path between last stitch and closest stitch, the person, honestly, you know, somebody it's, they thought that the computer would know where the last stitch where it stitched with thread in it. And it's like, it's a computer. It doesn't know. It's, I equate the computer to a 16 year old girl who thinks she knows the best way to do something when she is way wrong. And we mamas are going to tell them how to do it. We parents are going to tell them how to do it. That's the way I look at computers. Right. Another rep that calls it her toddler. Yes. Yes. Toddler, 16 year olds, two, two the same. Yeah. So I don't yeah. hear me say that. <laughs> They're not the same. They're not. I don't agree with her. Yeah, don't listen to her. <laughs> They're not going to listen to your podcast because you're not that cool. <laughs> no. Our, um, what do they say on the views expressed during this podcast do not reflect our... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they only reflect our views. They, they do not reflect our company's views. They don't reflect. But if you think about a toddler... They're so familiar with this. They have no fear of this. Well, they don't have any fear of anything. No. And we no. need to just be a little less fearful. Fight through the fear. That's what, what, that's what Karen said. Fight through the fear. Have, it, have you ever seen like a toddler in somebody's hand? Like not really even walking good. Well, grab a hold of your long arm at a show and quilt. Yep. Let's try yep. it. Yeah. You Keep trying. Like it might take quite a few tries, maybe a few drinks, but you know, you'll get there. <laughs> not too many, not too many drinks, because yeah. then it might be a whole different experience. One or two drinks. If you get to three, maybe do it another day, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're done for the moment. We are done. <laughs> yeah, I, there might be a, I don't know, I don't drink, but there might be a line there where there's yeah, totally a line laughing there. <laughs> to. No, sir, Ossifer, I have not been drinking. Yeah. If you shouldn't be driving your car, you probably shouldn't be driving your long arm either. So, yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. Friends don't let friends quilt drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on what retreat you're at. <laughs> Did you guys see my Sunday funny this last week? It was um, a quilt, a quilt retreat without wine is just another meeting. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Right? I you personally know, like the quilt retreats that supply the wine in the evening. It's like these yeah. are the best retreats. <laughs> my, my, my challenge to our customers out there who are our folks who are struggling with things is to find the humor in it. Find the humor somewhere. There's that, humor. that can be quite difficult when you've put out a ton of money yeah. and you just want to get something. Cause I've been there and you just want yeah. to get it quilted. And why won't this thing work? I put out a ton of money and I need it to make money because I need to pay myself back or I need to pay yeah. the loan on it or I need to, there's a lot of stress that can be in that, that whole world. Oh, and we've talked about that before. We've talked tell, about it before, before, for sure. I tell my new owners all the time, please, if you're, if you're struggling, text me. Yes. If you need help immediately, do not email me. I check my emails in the morning and I don't look at them again till the end of the day. I don't, yeah. I don't wait for emails all day long. If you're in the middle of something and you're stuck, call me or text me. Don't send me a Facebook message because I, I've got my messenger muted because I, I can't listen to it ping all day because then I'm just, I'm trying to not be distracted. Right. Right. And I can, I'm very capable of distracting myself just by looking over there. I don't need help with my phone. Call me or text me. And if I can probably in 10 minutes 
save you hours of frustration, I'm happy to do that because I never had anybody that I could call. I had to figure it all out. Right. So while I'm hoping that five years from now, you're not still texting me, asking me what color you should put on this quilt. <laughs> Please try for a little bit to figure it out. But if you're stuck or you're stumped, for heaven's sakes, reach out because I can help you. And then you've got that little bit of knowledge. Okay, well, last time when this happened, this is what she had me do. Chances are you're going to be okay and you won't need to call me back. You know what I mean? And the, the more experience you get, the more issues that come up. Because honestly, when issues are coming up, that's when you're learning. Yes. That's when you're getting better. That's when you're um, expanding your knowledge. Because if everything goes right every minute, you're using that machine, the first time something really goes sideways, you're going to have a complete meltdown. Because, well, why? It never did the, like, you know, nothing ever happened before. Like, what's the matter? Kind of thing. And it can almost make it worse if there's no challenges. Right? That's why I won't let people have their new owner's class until they've had their machine for a little bit. Right. And used it, not just had it in their home. And they have, oh, I've had my machine for a month. I want my new owner's class. But they still haven't, they still haven't turned it on apart from when they were stitching when I left. No, you have to work and you have to have some issues and you have to have things come up because you're going to get way more out of your new owner's class with me if you've got questions to ask from situations. Yeah. Right? It's also one of the reasons I don't typically do one-off new owner classes. I right. like having multiple people because then you yeah. all of a sudden, oh, as a new better. owner, much well, you have a support base. Like most of the time in my new owner's class, they share each other's phone numbers with each other and yeah, I mean, yep. and they're friends and they come in for events later and they sit together still. You know, you can block out where the new owner's class are at any one of my events. Like who was, who was in which one with which person? Cause they mm -hmm. all still sit together. I think it's hilarious. Um, I think it's awesome. Because, and it also, you know, everybody learns oh, more, yeah. you know, because everybody's idea about their machine, and it doesn't matter what model you have when you're at a new owner's class. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you've got a Millie 30 or a Lenny. It, it doesn't matter. All the knowledge is, is a blank, it's blanket knowledge. So it covers all the machines, right? Um, but when there's more than just one person in a class, and I tell people, you, you don't want a one-on-one -on -one class. I have too mm -hmm. much information. I'm going to vomit at you all day. Mm -hmm. That's going to be too much for you to handle in one day. If it's spread out over several people, it won't seem over so overwhelming because I'm not just focused just on you because I can be intense when I'm teaching. <laughs> a little bit because I get too excited and I want to teach you all the things in an eight-hour period. Um, but... People in the classes, you know, Sally's husband thinks of something and asks a question. And Rita, Rita wants to do thread painting, so she's got a question. Or somebody, and through all those questions that get asked during the day from all the other people that are in the room, everybody learns more. I and agree. No everybody stupid learns. question ever, ever. No, you know, never a stupid question. You also they got to have them. I also don't want to do your new owner's class when I do your install. Right. I mean, I well, know. Again, people... there's no reference. They're not going to remember anything because well, they, they just got it. It's there are much. people that do that, but it's one thing to help you load a quilt and to get you quilting. Sure. Happy to do that. But that's not your new owner's class. Your new owner's class needs to be, you've used the machine and come back later, right? And come in and let me teach you in a formal setting because you're not going to learn what you need to know. I mean, you know, there's, uh, there's a couple different ways I've seen the new owner's class done. It, the long armors who are the most successful are the ones that like Tracy said, wait a couple months to go in. Yes. They've used their machine. They know what they're doing as far as like using the buttons on your machine. Right. And they're there to learn techniques, right? right. How do I make this easier? Right. Oh, yeah. And again, I'm always available. That's what I say to them. Mm -hmm. 
te please text me. Please call me. We can do video calls, like if they're a distance or whatever. I, you are not on your own between now and your new owner's class. You are not mm -hmm. ever alone. That's I'm the always going to be there to help you. But you will get so much more out of your new owner's class if you've got experience and playtime. If I do the setup for somebody, when I leave, fabric is loaded. Mm -hmm. I have be. stitched and they are stitching when I leave. Yeah. I don't set something up and, you know, later gator. Um, I make sure that they're stitching. When I leave, the machine is humming. I'm like, oh, I'm okay. I'll let myself out. Have fun. Well, and typically, it sounds kind of funny, but that's typically what we end up doing. They're so focused on what they're doing. They're like, bye. Yeah. Yeah. But, and it's oh. awesome. And it is great. It's great to see people that are that excited, right? Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I always, I feel like it's part of my job is to make sure that something's loaded and that it's stitching right. If I'm doing oh, a professional sure. that's, install. That's part of setting it up. But, you know, it's not going to be without, it, it, there is a learning curve. Yes. You are going to not, there are going to be days when you're not happy and you do not like that machine at all. Trust me, I've had a million of them since 2006, but it's all part of the learning curve. And the more experience you get, the more you learn, the less all of those things, things like tension or thread breakage or all the little things that come up, they become, oh, they're not a big mountain of, oh my gosh, I don't know how to fix this. It's like, okay, well, it's either going to be this, 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 or this. So I'm going to start with this, then I'm going to try this, then I'm going to, because then you have the knowledge as to why that's, those are the reasons this could be happening. Right. Mm -hmm. These are the reasons this issues come up. So I'm going to work my way through them. And it's empowering to be able to troubleshoot and fix things yourself. Yeah. And that leads back to try to find, because sometimes when we can't see what the issue is, it's my issue, not the machine's issue, right? It's that's what I meant by find the humor in something. Maybe it's something that I was doing silly or I was doing, you know what I mean? Kind of thing, kind of find the joy of, what you just learned and how you can then move forward in the future. Oh, for sure. I mean, even something as simple as, well, my thread broke and nothing's been right ever since. Okay. Send me some pictures. Let me see your thread path. Yes. Guess what? The thread broke. The thread went backwards, pop sprung back. It came out from underneath the shepherd's hook and all the customer did was re-thread it through the one pigtail and through the eye of the machine without checking backwards. Yes. Didn't notice it wasn't underneath the shepherd's hook. So now they've got no top tension. So notice how the yeah. other two of us are shaking our head to this. We've had this happen before on calls. All three Ew. of us. And it's happened to me. The best it's is when you have a rental customer there. Yes. <laughs> all these things, they've, the only reason we, we have the knowledge and can help is because it's happened to us. It's all happened to us. Trust me. I've I've experienced it. I figured it out and I can help you. Right. Or if I can't help you, yeah. My the service team behind me can help you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but we we gotcha. I personally may not have heard about it, but trust me, somebody in the in the APQS world has heard about it. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I've seen some things that I'm like, how did that happen? Right. But <laughs> and then I and then I you know, talk to like engineering or something. They're like, oh, da, 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 right? Somebody has seen it happen and knows what, knows how to fix the situation. Um, if but, I get a question yeah. and I'm thinking, hmm, I think we need to get service involved with that. I'm already texting them over here going, hey, guys. That's exactly. Yeah. We're yeah. one step ahead. We're, one step, we're, we're working on it. We got it. <laughs> yep. Yep, let's figure that out. But um, absolutely, and then we all learn in that situation, right? We're yeah, all learning it, in that situation. Oh yeah, oh, for sure. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's the one thing that you'll you'll hear most APQS reps tell you is service has got our back. Mm -hmm. Like, if we really don't know what's happening, service will happily tell us what's happening so we can help you. Because when it comes down to it, we have four people on our service team full time um, that are taking our calls right? And a lot of clients. So anyone I can help is one person service doesn't have to help, right? Absolutely, so yeah. if they can educate the dealers and the certified maintenance techs, then, you know, they're taking the really hard calls. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are like, I can't get my thread to balance, I should be able to handle that one. 
right? Well, and oh God, as yeah. we're in the industry, as quilt store owners and as Juki and Janome and, and APQS, and I know there's, you know, whatever, we want to talk about what we do. Mm-hmm. So we want to help our customers. So the best source is your dealer, right? Your best mm-hmm. source is your dealer where you bought the machine. First and foremost, that should be your best relationship. I mean, yeah. So for some reason, you can't have that relationship, though, especially if it's an APQS machine. Start talking to another dealer. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're not going to, I mean, you're not going to gel with absolutely everybody in this world. So if no. if you've bought a machine from somebody that you're not gelling personally with, find someone you per- you do that that understands you a little bit better. I mean... I talk to people all the time that aren't my clients, right? That I did not sell their machine to them. Me too. Um, I get a lot of DMs. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Please help me. You don't know me. Please help me. Right. And And I would help people. Mm -hmm. So we kind of look at it like we're a big team. And, you know, you don't just get one dealer, you get us all. Right. So that's one of the strengths of APQS is that their dealer team does act as a team. Oh, right. and I would say we help other mm-hmm. brands as well as quilting. It's I look not at it just, yeah. yeah. I have helped people with other brands rethread their machines. I've helped them with their tension. Um, I did go out and try to help somebody with the frame once. because, <laughs> And I looked at it and went, I have no idea what this, this movement thing is even supposed to be doing here. We got it working where she could quilt. But I was like, I can't tell you mechanically why this is works the way it does and it doesn't look right to me um so i was able to get her quilting but i'm like you might not need to talk to somebody in your brand and figure this part of it out right right yeah so absolutely and that's fine and there was a part missing after all of that the guy was amazing amazed that came to fix her machine she goes how did that girl get you quilting you have a part missing from your frame look at you yeah i'm like woohoo <laughs> looks like I can figure it out straighten, as you straighten your cape <laughs> and, and adjust like, your invisible, your plane no better, and, and in your invisible plane, and off you go. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want the body. You can have the rest of it. I just <laughs> yeah. remember that Wonder action? Woman body. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, too old for that. Not too that old for that. Good. That's past. <laughs> yeah. Long, yeah. long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah, didn't get yeah. on the boat for that one. <laughs> anyway. But went and changed it for the world. Yeah. Well, thank you, ladies. I think this was fabulous. I hope everybody takes some great advice and cheer up, chin up, smile, breathe, and get Learn through. from your mistakes. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's not brain know. surgery. It's not. We're not cutting into anybody's bodies for... <laughs> Right. Thank God. I it's all going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies. Have a fabulous right. night. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Antoine, our machine. <laughs>